Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I'm frequently asked what is the best test to take to find out if you're gluten sensitive. And currently in the research community, there is no one designated test that is stated as this is what you do to diagnose gluten sensitivity. In fact, it's more stated the opposite, that there is no approved test. So where does that leave you <laughs> if you're trying to figure it out? Um, that's not, that's not a lot of help, but a recent study, a research study in the uh, clinical reviews in allergy and immunology um, did a nice sort of characteristic study comparing about um, 80 people with gluten sensitivity and 80 people with celiac disease and, and really looked at some characteristics and almost like you're building a case and, and I think that's a lot of what um, we need to do when we're trying to diagnose not just gluten sensitivity but celiac disease too because even though we have tests for celiac disease, they're never perfect, you know, no test is ever perfect, at least not in this arena. So um, what I wanted to go over is what these researchers came up with. So they, they looked at four different tests, three of them classic celiac tests and one more in the category of what we consider to be a better gluten sensitive test. So the three tests, and we'll put them up on the screen as well so you're not just hearing all these letters. Um, one is called DGP, and uh, that's a classic celiac test. There's TTG, another one, and EMA. So these are classic celiac tests, uh, but there's one other thing we want to get into, which is talking about um, the aspect of the immune system that's looked at with these tests. Predominantly uh, with celiac disease, we look at what's called immunoglobulin A. That tends to be written uh, capital I, small g, capital A. So there's immunoglobulin A, immu immunoglobulin G. Those are the two we're going to be talking about. There's other immunoglobulins as well. We're just going to talk about A and G. So uh, G is the most prominent in the human body, but A is found mostly in the mucous uh, membranes and linings of the, of the uh, body, especially the gut, which is why IgA is predominantly used in these blood tests for celiac disease, because it's a nice measure of what you're wanting to look for with classic celiac disease anyway, which is this damage to the lining of the gut. So they look at the IgA aspect. Now for the more gluten sensitive test, um, which is called AGA, anti-gliadin antibodies. And all that means is that that protein gliadin, your immune system doesn't like it. It's making antibodies against it because it, it really deems it as more of a toxin than, than f a food protein. That's really, really all it means. Um, so in this study, they looked at the IgA portion as well as the IgG portion. Uh, because IgG is, uh, as I said, more robust, it's more throughout the body. And as we know, with gluten sensitivity, it's not just the gut. There are plenty of people with gluten sensitivity that have uh, digestive problems, but there's equally, if not more, people who have absolutely no digestive problems, and they more have the fatigue and the brain fog and the eczema or skin rashes, uh, joint pain, numbness, headaches, depression, etc. Uh, so you want to look at a test that's looking at more that well-rounded view of the human body. And sure enough, what they found, what the researchers found, was that the, the IgG version of the AGA test, of the antigliadin antibody test, the IgG version was quite accurate uh, with 57% of the patients with gluten sensitivity showing positive for that. And maybe not surprisingly, uh, the IgA version had very low response from the gluten sensitive patients. Makes sense, it's looking at more that damage of that mucous membrane, which um, they did mention you will see inflammation of the lining of the gut in, in the small intestine with some gluten sensitive patients, but not necessarily that, that damage that you see with celiac. So it kind of makes sense that that IgA, uh, sorry, the IgG test um, is, is the better test. Now, for, for that same test, AGA, it is also a test that will show positive for celiacs, but the reverse is not true, meaning that the celiac tests 
will not show positive, and the research confirmed this, those other three tests that we talked about earlier, that the gluten-sensitive patients had almost no response. There was one person who had a response to it out of 80, and who knows, they might have been misdiagnosed. But uh, the point was that the celiac tests were good for celiac, and the antigliadin antibody test, the AGA test, when you looked at the IgG portion, was good for gluten-sensitive patients, okay? So what, what, is, what the takeaway really is, is that when you're doing a panel of tests, you really have to do a panel. What happens so often is that patients have the symptoms, they actually feel better when they don't eat gluten, yet they get a celiac panel, they they're told they don't have celiac disease, and then they're and, and equally told uh, it's okay for you to eat gluten. But what wasn't done is that full panel looking at the AGA test also and looking at the IgG portion. And once again, I apologize for all these <laughs> initials and letters, but there, <laughs> there's no other way to say it. Um, so, but just to keep summarizing so I don't lose you, um, even if the panel of tests, see if it's a celiac panel, they'll just look at the, a, the um, IgA version of the AGA test, and that won't pick up gluten sensitivity you need that IgG version. So in our clinic, we do a very robust panel and we look for IgA and IgG of everything just to be, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. And um, because sometimes people are a little deficient in IgA and, and it just won't come up. But for gluten sensitivity, if you're not looking for that IgG portion, you're just gonna miss it. And goodness knows we missed way too many people suffering from gluten sensitivity. So that, that's the case we're building here. And when you're looking for testing, just make sure uh, you get a nice celiac panel, but that includes that AGA, both the, the IgA version and the IgG version of that AGA test. So you wanna look at everything. Now, if everything was positive, the celiac tests were positive and the AGA was positive, yeah, okay, you're probably looking at celiac disease. But if everything was negative except that AGA, the IgG version, right, uh, then we can feel m much better about gluten sensitivity based on these researchers. I agree with them. I've been using the AGA test for a long time, uh, but it was nice to see the research because, as I said, as far as um, a worldwide or, or national uh, agreement on a test for gluten sensitivity, we don't have that agreement yet. Uh, but this research is showing that that this, this is not a bad way to approach it, which is, which is what we want, because right, we need tools in order to diagnose this. And one more interesting point that these researchers brought up, they, they hearkened back to a 2010 study looking at um, the classic genes associated with celiac disease. You might have heard of the HLA, DQ2, DQ8. Uh, those are the classic genes for celiac disease. And so when someone has a genetic test and they have these genes, they're told they have a possibility of getting celiac disease versus if they don't have the genes at all, they're told there's no way you can develop celiac disease. And what these researchers showed back in 2010 was that 40 to 50 percent of the gluten sensitive population actually carried these same genes, the DQ2 and DQ8. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if somebody had the genes and then they sort of went down that standard line of, okay, now let's look at your blood test to see if you have celiac disease, then could be told, oh, you don't have celiac disease because they're just looking at those narrow grouping of tests and erroneously miss the person's gluten sensitive. So just another piece of the puzzle that's important to have as you're building the case to make sure that gluten is not adversely affecting your health. And that's really the bottom line, right? Is it adversely affecting your health or not? Let's do the test and really find out. So I hope you found this informative. Uh, please uh, send me any questions that you have. I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.